This video will discuss the total partition function for atoms and molecules. So I mentioned in earlier videos that the energy of a given atom or molecule is the energy of its translations plus the energy of its rotations plus the energy of its vibrations plus the energy of its electronic state. So those energy levels all came from quantum mechanics. Then we took each of these individual energy levels and we determined what the partition function is from each of them for each of their contributions. So when we want to get the total partition function, Q of the total molecule, what we would do is sum over all the states from I equals 1 up to whatever it is, the Boltzmann factor of each of those states, e to the minus e mol over kt, which is equal to a sum over all the states e to the minus EI trans, EI rot, EI vib, EI elec, sub all of those over KT. So the way that exponents work, we can break out those into different things and, and have this following sum. Q mol equals sum over all states E to the minus E trans I over KT, E to the minus E rot I over KT, E vib I, E elec I, separate them all into their own thing. And we can separate that sum over all states to a sum over translational states, sum over rotational states, sum over vibrational states, and sum over electronic states for the Boltzmann factor of each of those individual translational, rotational, vibrational, and electronic states. So what we've done here is actually separated this out into the definition of the partition function for each of those individual energy contributions. So our molecular partition function is going to be a product of our translational, rotational, vibrational, and electronic partition functions. So up until this point in, in this series, I've been saying that uh, this when we have an energy, which is a sum of different contributions, we have a partition function, which is a product of those different contributions. And this is the math which justifies why I've been doing that thus far. So we can take the contributions from each of these individual components and multiply them together and see what our partition functions are for various kinds of atoms and molecules. So the simplest case would be an, a single atom. So our partition function is just the translational times the electronic partition function because atoms cannot rotate and they cannot vibrate unless they are in molecules. So that's our translational partition function, 2 pi mkt over h squared to the 3 halves times the volume, times the electronic partition function, degeneracy of the ground state, times e to the minus, or sorry, times e to the plus dissociation energy over kt. So k being the Boltzmann constant, t being the temperature, m is the mass of the particle, h is the Planck's constant, V being the total volume accessible to the atom. All right, so that's atoms. What about diatomic and or linear molecules? So that's going to be the translational times rotational times vibrational times electronic components. So the translational component is the same as it is for atoms, 2 pi mkt over h squared three to the 3 halves V. Electronic is the same part, G1 e to the de over kt. Now we add in the rotational part, T over sigma theta rot. Theta rot is the rotational temperature, which we get from the structure of the molecule, and we can look up in tables or compute it. Uh, sigma is the symmetry number, which is two for homonuclear diatomics, one for heteronuclear diatomics, and more complicated than that for general molecules. Then we have, for each individual vibrational mode, e to the minus vibrational temperature of that mode over 2t divided by 1 minus e to the minus vibrational temperature of that mode over t. Notice there's a 2 up here and there is not down there. So each of those modes has their own uh, contribution to that and then you multiply for each individual mode. Uh, linear molecules have 3n minus 5 vibrational modes if they have n atoms. All right, so that is, and the, similarly, the rotational temperatures, you can look them up in tables or compute them from the vibrational frequencies of the molecule. Then the most general and uh, most uh, non-specific way of looking at this is for nonlinear polyatomic molecules. 
the same translational partition function 2 pi mkt over h squared to the 3 halves v same electronic function g1 e to the de over kt the rotational part is 1 over sigma the symmetry number times square root of pi t cubed over the product of each rotational temperature theta a theta b theta c again get those from tables then there are 3n minus 6 vibrational partition functions that we multiply together, each having their own vibrational temperature, theta vib i, which we would get from tables, e to the minus theta vib over 2t over 1 minus e to the, e to the minus theta vib over t. So whether it is atomic, diatomic, linear, or nonlinear, we can take the specific parts of each contribution to the partition function and multiply those together to get our total partition function for the given type of atom or molecule.